Well, welcome back to our family worship uh, series. Uh, I have a privilege of setting before our children the Word of God, and so today we have a lesson for them from 1 Corinthians 15, specifically focusing on verse 17. We'll be reading together from verse 12 through 19. Again, these sermons, uh, these family worship lessons are, are based on sermons that I've preached to the congregation. I serve uh, Cliffwood Presbyterian Church in Augusta, Georgia. Uh, if you want to have access to those uh, sermons, they're, they're available to you, posted online, uh, both at Sermon Audio, and you see the, the link here below, and then also uh, YouTube, our YouTube channel carries all of them. So, uh, you have access to the sermons if you want to see the full uh, context of the lessons. Uh, today we're going to be looking and reading together 1 Corinthians 15, verse 12 to 19. It says there, now, if Christ is proclaimed as raised from the dead, how can some of you say that there is no resurrection of the dead? But if there is no resurrection of the dead, then not even Christ has been raised. And if Christ has not been raised, then our preaching is in vain and your faith is in vain. We are even found to be misrepresenting God because we testified about God that he raised Christ, whom he did not raise, if it is true that the dead are not raised. For if the dead are not raised, not even Christ has been raised. And if Christ has not been raised, your faith is futile and you are still in your sins. Then those who also who have fallen asleep in Christ have perished. If in Christ we have hope in this life only, we are of all people most to be pitied. So here I want to think specifically from verse 17 uh, of the reality that is solved by the, by the resurrection of Christ. Our faith is not futile, our sins are forgiven. And to start with that, we want to think about the universality of death in man. Since the fall, uh, since Adam, our <coughs> first father, sinned against God, all of his uh, offspring, all, all of uh, people born by ordinary generation, as it says in, in uh, the Westminster Shorter Catechism, uh, all those born by ordinary generation, they're corrupted by sin. They're guilty before God because of original sin. Uh, now, Jesus' death, of course, is different than that. Not only was Jesus conceived by the Holy Spirit, uh, as we know from the Gospels, but we also uh, see that he lived a sinless life. And one of the places where you can turn to teach your children that lesson is 1 Peter 2 and verse 22 to 24. Uh, and so there you see the reason why Jesus died. Jesus didn't die because of his own sin. Uh, Jesus died for the sins of his people. For everybody who places their faith in him, Jesus died on the cross for them to, to satisfy the justice of God, right? To uh, assume the wrath of God for the sin of another. So he's our substitutionary uh, offering, and he does that gladly. But he doesn't die for his own sin. He's not born in sin in the sense of original sin. He's not, he's not under original sin because he would be guilty already then. And he also doesn't commit any normal transgressions, the things that we would struggle with uh, in, in our lives. And so, so Jesus dies as a substitute. Now, it's, it's important to note later on in the chapter, and it's a very well a section of verses, but in verse 55 of uh, 1 Corinthians 15, there's that, that song that seems to be uh, written there, a wonderful song, uh, verse 55, O death, where is your victory? O death, where is your sting? Uh, the reason the Christian can sing that song is because Jesus came and died as a substitute. It's because of 1 Peter uh, 2, verse 22 to 24. And so as you read these different passages with your scripture, you, you point that out to your children, that they might see that Jesus' gift to them, not to people, to other people, to them, Jesus' gift to them, if they receive it by faith, is tremendous. He dies the death that we deserve. He he pays the price that uh, should be charged to us. He suffers the wrath of God that we deserve because of our sin. And he assumes it for himself so that we can uh, be right before God, not only justified, so declared righteous, but also uh, that the, the pleasure of God rests on his people. And so uh, set that before your children. Make sure they know the great favor of God that rests on them if they have faith in him. Teach them to trust in the promises of God. Help them to see the great blessing of belonging to Him. Keep reading from God's Word with them. God bless you, and I hope to see you next time.